we wanted to create something that stood out from the crowd a little bit. This is the reveal of the big mystery that Halo and Halo 2 have been driving toward. Where are we? Who is this? What's happening? The Covenant have uncovered something that is immense. It's this gigantic forerunner structure that just looks huge. Now that he's looking out over this massive thing, the player's gonna say, what is that? The other part of the story that's important, of course, is that Cortana is in trouble. I'll detonate in Emberclad's reactor, just like we did the Autumns. No, I don't want to chance a remote detonation. I need to stay here. Cortana has been left away from the chief. She's in the clutches of the grave mind. I will pass, and you will pass. All right. Shoot. We don't know what's happened to her since then. We don't know it's Cortana. It could be any sort of bizarre, almost satanic sort of voice. I am your shield. I am your soul. Something seems wrong. I know you. Your past. Your future. I think the expectation is huge. Everybody I talk to, you know, if you mention Halo, you know, everybody immediate reaction is how's Halo 3? I think what is going to strike people is the scale. That's real stuff way out there. I mean, we pushed it as far as we possibly could push it. We always wanted to have that epic feel, but due to the, the limitation of technology, you know, it, it always fell short. When you're working in high definition, it's a very unforgiving environment. Look at the Master Chief's armor. You see cool things about the Master Chief's armor. You see that he's self-shadowing. You see the textures are, are very high resolution. There's real-time reflection on his visor. But you look closer, you see he's beat up. He's scratched. He has been through some horrific battle, and we're actually showing that on the Chief this time around. You know, if people show just a pre-rendered movie, then there's always going to be speculation about, well, yeah, sure, your engine's not going to be able to do that. And I think what we're trying to show firmly is that our engine can do the stuff that we say it's going to do, and it's doing it right now. What we're building here is our bar for where we're going to shoot for in real gameplay. It's great. There's 90 guys here. Half of them are artists, half of them are engineers. And it's like oil and water. All the left brain people and all the right brain people, and both groups think that they're really the people in charge. Apparently, engineering is quite important. Oh, it's, of course, it's a science. I like to draw pretty pictures. Um, uh, so I get to do that, I suppose. It's all about the lighting. It's all about the, uh, you know, the additional detail, the bump mapping. You know, I can't remember all their terminologies and the Hudahada and the triple specular shields and so on and so forth. In Halo 3, you have you know, like entire dynamic range available for you. So you know, things are bright are bright. Things are dark are dark. You have the whole contrast there. For example, the sky, it's a new way of doing our sky, like from Halo 2. Every now and then, it'll catch my eye still, and then realizing, wow, I, I can't believe we are able to pull that off. For the announcement, it's gone really well. Um, it hasn't been as much of a, uh, you know, monkey shit fight um, as it could have been. Coon would be uh, people make decisions that affect us that, and they don't really worry about it. Like, oh, it's all right, the sound guys will figure it out at the end of the chain. And uh, we do, always, but sometimes it feels a little like he got shat on a few too many times. Everyone else is um, prolonging my part of the job. I'm actually just making it better, so that's how that works. <laughs> I think Marty uh, is pretty diverse in the way that he composes and the styles that he composes in. The fanfare is actually a new theme. If it, and I don't know if it's ever going to show up ever again. At times he's pulling out, um, uh, you know, Enya. Oh no, I didn't say that. Um, at times he's, he's uh, you know, paying homage to other artists. There are no monks singing in this. The only hint that I want to give anybody that this is Halo is that I'm going to be in E. Dorian. I actually just played an octave on the piano, just straight E's. When I played it back, I, I realized that it instantly got my attention. 
For this one, we, we really had, we had a great session with uh, Live Orchestra, which is uh, a bit above and beyond what we've done in the past. Master Chief is coming out of a desert, blowing heat, wind, completely obscured. So I wanted it to sound almost ethereal, just to bring some tension in and then have it open up slowly. The music and the sound is all about the drama. I'm just trying to absolutely score the drama of this moment. I mean, I think in the end, you're absolutely going to be able to play exactly what you're watching in this trailer. This is Spartan 117. Can anyone hear me? Over. Well, we had such a great ending to Halo 2 where <laughs> Master Chief said, I want to finish the fight. Master Chief, you mind telling me what you're doing on that ship? Sir, finishing this fight. Which uh, had most Halo players universally screaming and throwing their controllers at their TVs because they didn't get to finish the fight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I didn't say anybody threw their controller. They might have dropped it in in amazement. You won't just finish one fight, you'll finish all of the fights that you started in Halo 1. I think we're trying to raise an awful lot of questions about what on earth is going to go on in this game. No pun intended. We want this to be the Return of the King. We want this to be the final chapter in an epic trilogy. It's coming. And part of it's already here. It's going to be cool. This is the game, this is the engine, this is what Halo 3 is going to look like. 